Hello, I'm Jacqueline Clark Mapp. I'm the carer leader at Sussex Partnership NHS Foundation Trust. And I lead the team, which is the family friend carer team at the trust, responsible for implementation of the national programme called the Triangle of Care. Working with a range of strategic partners right across the voluntary and social care system. These are just some of our strategic partners that we link and work with to implement the Triangle of Care, which is really about engaging family friend carers of the people who access our mental health and learning dis disability services. Here's a broad estimate of the number of family friend carers across the Sussex and Hampshire footprint that our services cover. Just want to talk to you now about the Triangle of Care. It is a national scheme that was launched in 2010, developed by carers, primarily Alan Worthington, to build a therapeutic alliance in mental health care between family friend carers and professionals to improve patient care. It is a national membership scheme and it has three stages of recognition for services to actually commit to self-assessing their existing services and undertaking action planning to ensure the triangle of care standards are achieved. The membership scheme is not a kite mark that is just a task and finish tick box. It actually recognizes a long-term commitment from mental health providers who are working towards cultural change. Sussex Partnership gained stage one accreditation, which covered inpatient and related services in June, 2019. And I'm delighted that yesterday, the 22nd of November, we achieved stage two accreditation, which covers st stage one, plus our community teams and our assessors, independent assessors, describe the work as amazing. 70% of trusts within England are participated in, participating in the Triangle of Care. And that number is increasing. Now the six standards or principles that underpin the triangle of care are that firstly, carers and the essential role they play are identified at first contact or as soon as possible thereafter. Staff are carer aware and trained in carer engagement principles and strategies and the policy and practice around protocols regarding confidentiality and information sharing are in place. It's really important that confidentiality is not a barrier to effective communication and patient care. Defined posts responsible for carers are in place and carers have an introduction to the service and they have relevant information across the care pathway, as well as a range of carer support services available to family friend carers and a self-assessment tool, which the trust will use to see how well they're doing. Now, it's crucial for us to identify family friend carers as early as possible because if we don't identify them, we're not gonna do anything else with them. We have a poster campaign to raise awareness. These posters are up in our reception areas and we're using language where hopefully people will be able to engage more effectively in, because we found that if we say to someone, are you a carer? They'll say immediately, no, I'm a dad, I'm a mum, I'm a neighbor, I'm a friend. So we're trying to use language, we are using language here that says to, 
that people can actually identify a bit more effectively with. Because if you say, are you supporting somebody in their care? They might say, oh yeah, I'd, I'd go and get their meds or I take them to appointments. Or they might say, oh yes, I'm visiting to, to give them some um, things that they need or I'm giving them emotional support. People identify more effectively with that. We have um, care awareness um, training that we undertake with our partner organizations where family friend carers are really brought into the forefront of the effective care planning that we want to deliver. Now confidentiality is an absolutely crucial part of the work that we do. Many patients rightly want to maintain their confidentiality. And uh, sometimes they're willing to share some information with some people, no information with particular people. And sometimes that can vary, it can change. And it's really important that their confidentiality is respected it's, as a patient. It's also important that family friend carers confidentiality is respected. So the principle that we work around is that we have protocols in place where we are seeking permission at every opportunity. And then we are, if we can't share information, we explain that, but we know we can always listen. And that's crucial. So we have a confidentiality policy, which we um, co-produce and co-design with family, friend, carers, patients, and, and staff that just guide us on how we can um, navigate our confidentiality space. We have posters in place, and this one is specifically for family, friend, carers. And um, it's just on one page, which distills our whole policy down into really helpful headings that family, friend, carers find useful. We have specific family, friend, carer posts in place as well in a number of our inpatient and urgent care settings. And they are a very good link for family, friend, carers and our teams. We also provide information packs for family, friend, carers, welcome letters, information about visiting time, key contacts, and um, range of resources, as well as that confidentiality leaflet that I mentioned earlier. We also share advanced statements, advanced decisions, refusal to treat for treatment and lasting power of attorney information so that family friend carers can help to navigate that space around confidentiality, but also they can impart information that they know is crucial and helpful in patient care to improve patient safety and aid recovery. And we signpost to our strategic partners. We have a very mature relationship with our strategic partners. And this is, has been crucial. We make sure that we make these referrals as soon as we can with the permission of family friend carers. And our care organizations provide information back to us about how we are doing for our referrals as well. So it's a very iterative process and we have very close and very good relationships that we can build on to make those referrals. And that family friend care, is, it's crucial that they feel supported, listened to, and also um, family friend carers may want to continue their, their caring role or they may want to change it or, or cease it. But I think it's really important that we engage with our um, partner organizations to ensure that family friend carers are, are listened to and supported in whatever choices they want to make. Now, there are a range of benefits of the triangle of care and working with this, this tool. And some of them include recognition of, of family friend carers. That recognition and value and respect and validation of the carer experience cannot be underestimated. As a family friend carer myself, I know what it's like when I'm listened to, and I certainly know what it's like when I'm not listened to. A appreciation of the, the carer's unique knowledge about the person and the care is really crucial. Family friend carers will know the patient much better, often much better 
then, then clinical teams will, will know them. Emotional and practical support to enable carers to have a life of their own alongside their caring role is also important. Helping carers to feel part of a team and less isolated is crucial, particularly in, in the COVID um, times where people have been caring behind closed doors. This has been absolutely crucial. Creating a, a more helpful, supportive relationship with, with carers is invaluable as well. Giving carers and service users realistic expectations is also vital. Explaining what we can do, what we can't do, um, what, what is achievable, timeframes is really, really good for, for shaping and understanding expectations on both sides. Ensuring staff have information about service user moods, behaviors, best ways to interact with them, what works for them, what doesn't work, signs when they're doing really well, um, signs when they might not be doing so well. All of this is in cru crucial information to, to, to be able to share. And it doesn't breach confidentiality to listen to a, a, a carer. Provide an organization uh, ways to look at how we currently engage and in include carers and get thinking outside of the box really. Having those conversations is crucial. Increase staff awareness and understanding of carer lived experience, especially vital in high secure settings, our forensic healthcare services, for example, and provide staff an opportunity to influence how challenges in the organization are overcome. IT systems not suitable, um, no training, et cetera. So we do as you can imagine, use a lot of digital resources. And that's pro providing very useful information and means of engagement. Here are some of the tools that we use, Attend Anywhere. This system allows patients to have access to appointments on their computer. And this system has enabled family and friend carers to attend meetings and ward rounds virtually as well. Zoom meetings, um, one of the added benefits has been that carers uh, would not normally be able to attend or, or due to travel or other um, barriers, have been able to participate and link in with other family friend carers for our carer support groups that we hold, pre-meetings and attending meetings with um, patients where the patients have agreed to this. Digital cards, we've set up um, letters to loved ones where family friend carers can download a digital card, color it in, put some uh, text, and they can pop that to us on a generic email and we can get that to the um, patient in our in-service settings. That's the letter of, to loved ones poster and the information can be found on our, our website. We've also produced a Z card which folds up literally into Z, very small pocket size, can be popped in a purse or a wallet that has some really useful information for family friend carers. Things like helping to keep yourself well, contact for all our carer support organizations that we connect with, what actually is a definition of a family friend carer and also missing persons information and other really useful information. This again was co-produced with family friend carers as a result of a quality improvement project that we, we undertook. So we are working very closely with our family friend carers and our patients on quality improvement projects. They've included increasing the number of family friend carers on our system and linking those to patients so that we can get richer and better information to engage with family friend carers. We also have, as I said, um, the work on the Z card, which I, I led with, I co-led with um, family friend carers and clinicians as well as patients. And we've also um, increasing digital use through our quality improvement projects. And also where now our self-assessment tools, we're going to um, computerize those so that we have them all in one place on a system removing the paper-based system that we're relying on at the moment. So that will make it a, a faster process and cut down the administrative um, burden on very busy 
colleagues for that. So that's just a, a, a taster of, of what we're doing and we've got more in the pipeline. We've also signed up to um, employees for carers. So we're reaching out more and more with our probably around a thousand colleagues and rising who identify as family friend carers. And we really do emphasize about self-care. It isn't selfish to look after yourself. It's really important. So we've produced a, a range of top tips um, for coping, especially uh, during COVID-19, but it works for any period in our lives. Exercise, avoiding conflict, making space for your own independence and avoiding danger at home. It's really important to look after yourselves as well as you look after others. So we have a 24 hour, seven day a week helpline, which is accessible for family friend carers as well. Confidential helpline that is open to people with lived experience of mental illness, family friend carers and health professionals. And I'll stress here, I realize that some people may wear all three hats. And that is very, very challenging as well. But it's, as I said, it's confidential, this helpline and it's here to support you, whatever role that you're in. So inevitably concerns, challenges, and need for advice is part of a, a, a carer role. And we do have our patient advice and liaison service, which you're more than welcome to, to tap into. Um, by all means, the first port of call is the clinical team, um, but the PALS team can help you just to navigate the system a bit more, reflect and um, find ways of in engaging that um, might be more helpful for you. Here's the contact details for this team and more than happy to um, speak with you, um, signpost you and keep connected. Thank you very much.